more time. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, there we go. One more time. All right. Hey, family. <laughs> I don't know what has been going on. Uh, all right, all right. Let me there turn this go. down. Hey, family, this is Jermaine Thomas with another episode of Sunday School Live. Uh, been having some technical difficulties trying to get on, and I have no clue uh, to what was transpiring. But listen, we're here. Um, I'm going to try to dive right into episode eight. Um, and so if you pay attention to the ticker below, uh, the title of these episode series from seven, uh, which was last week to today's episode eight, exploring or rethinking what is spirit and truth, um, and it start a new series starting a new uh, a new series starting a new year, um, and also I'm looking for uh, some podcast uh, platforms that'll be good and that'll be an opportunity to uh, watch us and listen well listen to us on podcasts as well. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to another episode of Sunday School Live with your host, Jermaine Thomas, a.k.a. Uh, the Professor. Uh, let me do some other technical stuff here um, and uh, record this. I usually play my theme music, Father Abraham, but uh, let me see. Well, we're late. <laughs> I'll play it some other time on the next episode. Uh, so what I'm going to do um, with today, hey, Glenda, how you doing today? I've uh, been having some technical uh, difficulties getting on here uh, for today's episode, but we're going to jump right in um, to our subject matter of exploring and rethinking what is spirit and truth uh, with your host, Jermaine Thomas, a.k.a. Uh, the professor. So thank you for tuning in and tracking with us. Uh, I had an awesome lineup. I was hoping I'd be able to start on time. Uh, so I probably have to, I probably redo, uh, this episode, um, because, uh, is late, <laughs> uh, in, in, into the show. We would have been halfway done probably by now. Um, and I got a lot of supplemental content to cover. Um, and so what I've been talking about, uh, in this particular subject series, um, of rethinking and exploring, uh, exploring and rethinking spirit and truth. Uh, if you guys were following and tracking with me last week, so it's important uh, that you go back and check out last week's episode, uh, episode seven, uh, to kind of catch up to where I'm going in the direction I'm looking to go uh, in these upcoming in episode series. And so, um, uh, with that, I was defining, you know, uh, spirit, spirit and truth. We, we often look at that as a two word phrase. Um, and so we looked at um, a uh, biblical context uh, understanding uh, the, of the phrase spirit and truth, which actually is one phrase uh, that Jesus was referencing uh, with his dialogue communication uh, with the woman at the well. Uh, spirit and truth, more so it is saying uh, to worship God in a more spiritual way. Um, and so we looked at um, to different uh, contexts of terms and terminology, often when we hear that phrase, uh, the first thing that comes to mind when we hear spirit and truth, worship God and spirit and truth, we often associate it, you know, with the, with a certain style of worship. Um, and we frame it in that way uh, to worship God and spirit and truth. And so we, uh, we uh, denote that to mean uh, worship God in, in, in truth of his word. <laughs> Uh, re in reality, that phrase, you know, is actually referring to a, a state of being um, in a way of life uh, that is uh, innate for all of us. It's not a uh, it's not a Christian term, <laughs> uh, if you will, even though we have associated it in that way. And so this show, as I've always said, is a uh, exploration show. It's not an answer show. Right. <laughs> uh, we're here to explore. Uh, these different themes uh, and subject matter surrounding the Bible or the Christian faith as a whole. Uh, and so this is an exploration show. And so we're looking and exploring uh, 
this topic of spirit and truth and hitting it from different angles and perspectives, um, philosophically, uh, scientifically, um, and biblically uh, with respect to hermeneutics and understanding of these phrase and things and subject matter that we would cover. We would even cover the taboo subjects as well. Um, and so, like I said, I had uh, geared up a lot of great content for the show, but we were having um, a lot of technical difficulty getting on uh, for whatever reason. And so what I'm going to do, so this would be a part one of episode eight, and then next week would be a part two of, of episode eight. Um, and so, uh, and if you get an opportunity, there's a, uh, in the ticker down, there's an opportunity to give um, and, and to sow into what we're doing here at Sunday School Live, where Sunday School would never be the same. Um, and so listen, let me just jump right on in. I, I want to start with this video because I used it last week. And to me, it just, it just really speaks to uh, uh, the direction uh, that I'm looking to go in this subject matter. And it just really defines for us uh, suspitally, uh, uh the term spirituality, right? Or uh, spirit realm, you know, uh, that word association. And so let's look at this clip. This is from my favorite movie. Uh, Dr. Strange. Uh, and oftentimes we take a Western idea and perspective uh, when it comes to uh, spirit. And so anything outside of the natural realm of taste, touch, uh, eyes, what we see, uh, and things like that out of, out of the five senses is not real to us. You know, this is our Western school of thought of thinking. Uh, so let's, let's just dive right on into this clip here um, and pull it on up. Let me have I spent my last dollar getting here on my ticket and you're talking to me about healing through belief. You're a man looking at the world through a keyhole as you spent your whole life trying to widen that keyhole, to see more, to know more, and now on hearing that it can be widened in ways you can't imagine, you reject the possibility. No, I reject it because I do not believe in fairy tales about chakras or energy or the power of belief. There is no such thing as spirit. We are made of matter and nothing more. It's just another tiny momentary speck within an indifferent universe. You think too little of yourself. Oh, you think you see through me, do you? Well, you don't. But I see through you. That to me is just one of the most classic scenes uh, uh, in in the movie to me. <laughs> uh, but but that's often our conditioning, right? Uh, our our social conditioning, our religious conditioning, uh, when it comes to understanding uh, spirit or spirituality, or what is spirit and truth, or what is the reality of nature, or, or worshiping God in a more spiritual way. And we hit a lot of points in trying to unpack spirit and truth and looking at it from various perspectives. And, and the reality of looking at spirit and truth more so out of not in the context of worship songs. And again, there's nothing wrong with worship songs, but more in the context of a state of awareness in our being. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, again, expand, you know, uh, our awareness when it comes to when we hear the word spirituality and we hear the word, we hear the phrase spirit and truth um, to just encomp that it's more encompassing of something more substantive than what we've been traditionally uh, uh, or conditionally uh, to associate that phrase or that term to. Um, and so uh, there's another video uh, that I have uh, is Rob Bell. Uh, I'm going to pull some excerpts from it. Um, and just to show you guys again, like I said, this we're looking at. I'm bringing in different. Uh, it's no different than if I was writing a term paper, you know, or or doing some research. I bring in other uh, subject matter experts, right? And I bring them in to kind of get us to expand, you know, our dialogue and our conversation around this said subject. And so uh, I have another video that I would like to show you, or actually an excerpt. Uh, so when you get a chance to please go back and watch this particular video 
uh, in its entirety. I think it is just uh, phenomenal how he lays out, uh, basically, if you will, this argument of understanding how everything is spiritual. Um, we've we've often associate spiritual as something that's um, that there's this this dichotomy, if you will, or this dualistic perspective, and so uh, we'll say spirit is out there somewhere, you know, and then us physical is here. Um, and so our association is uh, to understand spirit is in the great beyond, right? Uh, instead of a reality that's now, or that everything, as Dr. K. Fairchild would say, everything is spirit through and through. Um, and he and he lays out um, in this video a, a very artfully uh, and very uh, technically uh, lays out this argument. Uh, about how everything is spirit through and through using science. And I love how, you know, that this, that this marriage of science and faith is coming together to affirm a reality that has always been true um, of, 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 of us, um, what has always been true of creation. Um, and, uh, and I think he talks a little bit, he gets into the quantum physics of, 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 of conversation. He touches on the premise of that a little bit. Um, but just just listen, I want to jump in and just to take this in and I give uh, some more dialogue around that as well. Hold on here. Let me pull this up. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Your value you, comes. Value comes for the sun, moon, less and less here. But you and I are a fusion of these two realms. Possible for religious institutions and for your money, how you handle relationships are open and you're aware of it. You cannot deny what is central to your makeup as a human being. In the Hebrew, this is a brand new idea in human history. See, everything, dog. God's like, dog, yeah, hey, wait, that's my name backwards. Look. <laughs> oh, one more, really? Yeah, one more. Whoa, okay. Uh, I don't know, cat. Cat. Hey, wait, I didn't make those. Uh, <laughs> That's funny, I don't care who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, ah, ew, yeah. Now, uh, this poem it is proposing things that no one had ever proposed. It's a brand new idea in human history. See, everything in the creation story fits into one of two categories. It's either purely physical, rocks, dirt, trees, seeds, it's either water, it's either purely physical, or it's, it's uh, spiritual, it's spirit, it's I am, it's action, it's either immaterial or material, it's either physical or non-physical. Everything in creation is either one or the other. A tree has physicality but no spirit. I am a spirit with no physicality. Fruit, physical, no spirit, 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 but no physical. Everything is one or the other. Angels, spirit, no physicality. Sky, water, physicality, no spirit. And then, in this creation story, the human being is physical, dust, and yet is breathed into by spirit. There is nothing in the entire created realm that is totally spiritual and totally physical. Is a human being spiritual or physical? The answer, of course, yep. Now, this has profound implications for how you and I understand what it means to be human. You are here. Maybe you've heard somebody say, well, I'm just not into spiritual things. Are you? Are you a human being? Yeah, too late. <laughs> the issue is not whether you're a spiritual being or you have a spirituality. The issue is whether 
your eyes are open and you're aware of it, you cannot deny what is central to your makeup as a human being. In the Hebrew language, there is no word for spiritual. If you would have said to Jesus, Jesus, how is your spiritual life? What? What do you mean? Because to label one area spiritual is to label other areas not spiritual. It's absolutely foreign to the world of the scriptures. It's absolutely foreign to the worldview of Jesus. The assumption is that you are a fusion of two realms, and a human being occupies a totally unique place in the entire universe. How you handle your money, how you handle relationships, sexuality, forgiveness, reconciliation, business, school, work, play, recreation, everything we do, we do as an integrated being, 100% physical, 100% spiritual. These first Christians latched onto this right away. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. What were they saying? Every act is a spiritual act. It's whether or not you're aware of the implications of what you're doing. Now, this has profound implications for how we understand what it means to be part of a church because it's possible for religious institutions and for churches to actually work against an integrated holistic spirituality. What can ever so subtly happen is that we emphasize certain things and in the process de-emphasize other things. What can happen ever so subtly is people begin to see God as dwelling in a certain place. Sometimes it's only with a certain person or a certain group of people. Sometimes it's a building. Sometimes it's an hour on a particular day of the week. And whatever so subtly happens is it creeps in that God is there. And obviously something powerful happens when pe people gather for the purpose of worshiping and pursuing this one true God. But ever so subtly what can happen is God is there, and if God is there, ever so subtly God can seem less and less here. But you and I are a fusion of these two realms. We are both. And so perhaps maybe a more biblical way to understand what a community or a church is, is it's a group of people who are bonded together in their pursuit of God. Obviously, they're learning to see God in each other, and God is powerfully present in their midst, but these are people who are being given eyes to see the divine everywhere they go. What is Jesus saying to his first followers Whatever you do for the least of these, you've done for me. What is he trying to teach them? He's trying to teach them to live in such a way that every single interaction they have, they will be fully aware of the God who is present in that interaction. He's teaching them that all of life is drenched in the divine. The issue is whether our eyes are open enough to see it. Whether our eyes are open enough to see it. I just think that that is so, um, that is so profound. Again, uh, uh, go back and, um, and, and check this video out. It's on YouTube um, and uh, it's by Rob Bell. Um, and then actually I'll post the name in the comment section so you guys can go and check that out for yourself. Uh, but I mean, that's just really profound. I mean, again, you have to go and, and watch the entire video, just certain excerpts and points and perspectives I really want to pull out and then have a dialogue and then pull in some other supplemental material uh, to keep this uh, conversation driven and to just spark that interest in, in many of us that's watching. Uh, and maybe you've had questions, you know, about spirit and truth or, you know, just, you know, getting a greater grasp. Of, of awakening to this reality of being, um, that father is not out there somewhere. And, and, and like you said, that is so true that, uh, and what I talked about in episode seven is that how we're sometimes religiously conditioned um, in association with terms. And, and so we maybe give an affix to God and saying, God is here, 
you know, God is here in the place, you know, um, a very, I have a very charismatic background, you know, so we have to, we, we, we pray God down, right? You know, we had to pray God down, you know, the reality of, of, of praying God out, <laughs> uh, was it was not even a concept to consider, right? Because out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Um, so the notion was is that we had to get to church in order to have this encounter with God, and and not really uh, 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 settling on the idea of what the scriptures testify to, right? Uh, that He is nigh unto us. Uh, we, we quote the scriptures: "Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world," but you know, not really awakening to this reality, you know, of, of the substance of the reality of who we really are, um, and 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 this in and, and this nature or understanding of spirit and truth is not a, a Christian concept. You know, uh, Jesus wasn't on the scene to uh, to uh, start a a Christian church, you know, or a, a a Christian religion. Jesus was there on the scene to remind humanity who they really are. Um, and so that this, uh, like you said, this, this, this connection that we have, right? Uh, even though people are not aware, objectively everyone, this is our, our nature, but not everybody is having uh, that experience subjectively. Um, maybe because like Dr. Strange in the video, you know, they've been conditioned uh, humanistically, right? That is you know, a part of our science and philosophy and school of thought, right? Um, and how we're educated or how we grow up in society. Uh, and so movies like this, uh, I believe, is, is awaken us to, to what's in us. I remember as a child, right, um, how me and my youngest sister would sit on um, our car in Michigan. Um, and at night, uh, well, not my car, my mom's car. And we would sit on the car at night and we just stare up in wonderment you know, in the stars and wonder about, you know, creation and wonder about our purpose in life, you know, having these deep philosophical conversations at a young age, right? Uh, but then life happens. And so uh, uh, circumstance happened. And so you reduce life to li uh, living life on life terms. But Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly, that God kind of life, the Zoe kind of life. Right. Uh, or to awaken us to the reality that we have a God uh, likeness uh, in reality of our nature. Right. Because we're born from above. Um, and that's that's what's true of all of mankind. That is what what is true of all of humanity. And like he was pointing out, you know, sometimes uh, be, because of church uh, in, in, in our conditioning, you know, we associate God with a certain place. And not realizing this is the reality of our nature. And so you see that, you know, in his conversation with Nicodemus uh, and, and bringing Nicodemus into the reality and, and making him aware that, hey, you know, you're born from above. It's not about, you know, uh, 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 this this physical uh, reality. Right. You're more than the sum of your parts And the same thing in the dialogue, in this conversation with the woman at the well. Uh, and so he was in a really religious, dualistic uh, 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 society. That was the society. And so uh, uh, the, the argument was, you know, can the dead be raised? The, the philosophical religious arguments, uh, or when you die, you die forever. That was the Pharisees and Sadducees schools of thought. Uh, and everything was uh, uh, this uh, dualistic perspective. It was either when the association with spirit was either good or bad. Um, and so it, it, if you had the common code, uh, that can be uh, reasoned <laughs> that you had a demon or you were cursed by God. And so this was the schools of thought and thinking uh, of, the, of the culture um, that Jesus was submitted into. And Jesus was showing them and demonstrating them uh, that this reality, that there's, there's no distance between the realm of the spirit or, or this natural realm reality. Listen, you you are the intersection, right? We are the intersection uh, between uh, the, the the unseen and the seen. Uh, and so Jesus does these uh, 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 these phenomenal things, right? Or these have these encounters <laughs> uh, where you have um, this encounter on the Mount Transfiguration, uh, where 
um, the, the, the patriarch shows up, right? Um, and so in the essence, <laughs> Uh, Jesus is talking to the dead. There's an aspect of necromancy that's going on here. Hold on, Jesus, you 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 you're waking us up to a whole nother dimension in reality uh, that's beyond uh, our religious cultural context of understanding. Uh, but you see, this begins to cement, you know, into uh, a transformation begins to take place when awakening begins to take place in the disciples, right? Um, and so when Jesus, when when Peter uh, and John is at the gate called Beautiful, and they see a man there uh, uh, at the at the gate, he was begging for alms, and he's crippled. Um, and Peter reaches out; they reach out to pray for this man, and they say, "Such as we have, we give unto you." Um, and so the, they began to live out the substance and the reality of this intersection of the of their nature and the being. Uh, hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, Myla. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Welcome aboard. I had to jump on late. I was having some technical difficulties um, jumping on in here. So this will be a part one um, uh, series. Will be a part two. Um, and so I'll finish up around uh, in about six minutes or so. So if you get a chance to go back um, and watch this episode from the beginning. Uh, and what I do is I'll probably reset and just do this thing all the way over from the beginning. Uh, I jumped on here late. Let's have some technical difficulties, but I just want to flush out some of these points um, and just give you something to chew on and something to meditate on. Um, I just showed a video by Rob Bell, uh, which was really phenomenal. He gave this presentation about how everything is spiritual um, and about speaking to our identity and awareness of our identity and the substance of that. Um, and so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, end this little dialogue here and then we'll end this uh, segment of conversation. But if you guys haven't got a chance to, please go back and watch episode seven, which is the introduction to this new episode series um, uh, of exploring uh, and, uh, and looking at what is uh, spirit and truth. So if you get a chance to, please go back and check that out, um, exploring and rethinking what is spirit and truth, um, this episode, this new episode series. And so this is episode eight or the second episode of this series was started in the new year last week. Um, and so if you get a chance to please look at the, the ticker too, and it's an opportunity to give and to sow um, into what we're doing here at Sunday School Live. But anyway, let me just, uh, just end this here. Uh, and just really want to flush it out, just really speak into the heart, you know, of, and, and to raise our awareness. Like I said, this is not an answer show, uh, uh, but this is an exploration show. And hopefully something is shared here that would empower you, encourage you, but more importantly, challenge you to think. Uh, the central term to Jesus' message was metanoia, uh, which is to change the way you think, change your perceptions. Uh, uh, of, 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 of how you perceive life and how you see life and understand that God, you are born from above. And so this accessibility of living the God kind of life is accessible and available to each and every one of us. This is the good, this is the good news. I call it, this is the good news of Abba's heart. Abba meaning source. We live out of source. The kingdom of God is on the inside of us. And so the series is to just broaden our horizon um, than what we've been maybe religiously and socially conditioned, but broaden our horizon. So when we say these terms, we have more substance uh, to, to an understanding of these terms and phrases like spirit and truth. And so that's the heart behind this episode series. But anyway, let me, I'm going to go back to this Rob Bell uh, 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 presentation and, and, and end it there. Um, and then we'll come back next week and hopefully no technical difficulties. And then uh, we'll start over from the beginning uh, there. So hold on here. Action they have, they will be fully aware of the God who is present in that interaction. He's teaching them that all of life is drenched in the divine. The issue is whether our eyes are open enough to see it. Now, this creation poem 
that begins the scriptures has God creating and then God resting. And there's a fascinating thing that happens in the middle of the poem. Sometimes Hebrew poets would work in what's called a chiastic form, which means that they would hide or they would plant the meaning of the poem somewhere in the middle. Well, if we were to look at the middle, there are seven days, and so the fourth day is the middle day. In the fourth day, we're told that there are sun, moon, and stars, which is, well, what does that have to do with the meaning of the poem? The explanation for the sun, moon, and stars is God made the sun, moon, and stars in order to mark the days, the years, and the seasons. Now, seasons is an absolutely giant word in the Bible. It's central to the life of somebody who follows God. It was central to the world of Jesus. So anybody reading this poem, that word seasons planted right in the middle would have jumped out to them, particularly because the poem begins with God creating and ends with God resting. Why is seasons significant? Seasons is a reference to two things. First, seasons is a reference to the Sabbath. Who is one of the original audiences of this poem? a group of Hebrews who had been slaves in Egypt. Now, what was life like in Egypt? In Egypt, they worked seven days a week making bricks. They had quotas of bricks they had to meet. Bricks, 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 bricks. Every day, all day, bricks. In Egypt, your worth and value came from meeting your quota of bricks. You were as worth as much as you produced. This was life in Egypt. God rescues these people from life in Egypt, and now he's trying to teach these people what it means to be a human being, not a human doing. God is trying to teach these people what it means to be human. You are not a machine, and in Egypt, their worth came from what they produced, and God is trying to teach these people, your worth does not come from what you produce. Your value does not come from bricks. Your value comes because you are rescued and redeemed children of the one true God. So what does God say? Every seven days, work six days, but then take a day and do no work. Rest, reflect, play. That's good, right? That's what really, really good. I, I, let me go take back. I just want to day a week just listen to that to again, guys. That yourself. is... Only because the poem begins with God creating and ends I, I with love God that. resting. Why is seasons significant? Seasons is a reference to two things. First, seasons is a reference to the Sabbath. Who is one of the original audiences of this poem? A group of Hebrews who had been slaves in Egypt. Now, what was life like in Egypt? In Egypt... Come on, our Egypt, our Egypt could be a mindset, okay? Our Egypt could be a mindset and bondage and thinking that our worth, I, I, I just, man, our worth is associated with doing, uh, uh, being a good mom, being a good worker, uh, uh, being a good parent, you know, associated with doing or I'm uh, being a bad parent or I'm being a bad worker, uh, but not centering our being or our sense of awareness of who we are and who Father says that we are, and defining ourselves in that way. So I'm going to let this play out, and then uh, we'll end it there, guys. Thank you guys for following and tracking with us at Sunday School Live uh, with your host, Jermaine Thomas. Hold on. Seven days a week making bricks. They had quotas of bricks they had to meet. Bricks, 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 bricks. Every day, all day, bricks. In Egypt, your worth and value came from meeting your quota of bricks. You were as worth as much as you produced. This was life in Egypt. God rescues these people from life in Egypt, and now he's trying to teach these people what it means to be a human being, not a human doing. God is trying to teach these people what it means to be human. You are not a machine, and in Egypt, their worth came from what they produced, and God is trying to teach these people, your worth does not come from what you produce. Your value does not come from bricks. Your value comes because you are rescued and redeemed children of the one true God. So what? Your value and your worth comes from the reality of you being redeemed by the one true and living God. That that is a good place uh, to end and to land this plane again. Like I said, we 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 had a little technical difficulties getting on. Listen, uh, God bless the Goma family. Thank you guys for tracking with us. 
uh, here at Sunday School Live with your host, Jermaine Thomas, a.k.a. The Professor, where Sunday School Live would never be the, where Sunday School would never be the same. Listen, thank you guys for tracking with us, um, and I'll see you next week with a full episode with no technical difficulties uh, at all. Uh, God bless you, and you guys have a good evening. Bye-bye.